I've talked a lot about my Macs, haven't I? But I've never really showed you what's on them. Let's change that. Hello and welcome back to Mark Ellis Reviews. Thank you for subscribing if you have, and thank you to my latest Patreon, Nick Fast. Hello, Nick. So recently I've been offering some insight into how I customize my Macs when I first get them and some of the techniques I use and some of the tools that I use to be as productive as possible while using my Macs. I'll put links to those videos in the description. I'll also apologize if I look a bit hot and sweaty. It is boiling in the UK at the moment. But today I thought I'd do something slightly different and show you the apps that I use day to day or most weeks, I suppose, to run this channel and run my business. It is quite a long list, but I'm gonna rattle through it. and I'm gonna give you basically a very quick overview of how I use each app and also why I chose them. Let's get straight into it. Firstly, Final Cut Pro. You would not be watching this video if it wasn't for Final Cut Pro because that is the app that I use to edit my videos. I love it, it's superb. I'll be completely honest with you, I've never used any other video editing app in my entire life. I've not even touched Adobe Premiere. I've not used LumaFusion on the iPad, although I really want to. And that isn't because I don't want to use that software. It's just because I started using Final Cut Pro and I've built a workflow around it. And anyone who edits videos will tell you that once you get into a video editing workflow, that just the thought of changing and moving to something else is pretty frightening. So I just stick with Final Cut Pro. It works for me. Okay, it's a bit dumbed down in certain areas but it works and I can just produce these videos very quickly. So I had to mention Final Cut Pro first. Second app is Logic Pro and I am a bit of a bedroom music producer. I don't do it as much as I used to, but ever since the age of about, I don't know, probably about 10 or 11, I have made, I've played music and I've made music on my own in my bedroom. But for years and years, I used Cubase. Anyone who, who works on music production or like me as a hobbyist music producer will know what I'm talking about here. So I, I won't bore the rest of you with this, but very quickly, I started life with Cubase on an Atari ST. I then went to Logic when it used to be owned by eMagic, I think, and that ran on PCs, loved it. And then in about 2005, I think it was, I bought a Mac G5 and used GarageBand for the first time, which is a cut down version of Logic Pro. I then moved to Logic. Long story short, Logic Pro is the app that I use to do all of my audio editing, both for this channel, but also when I do, which is quite rare these days, but when I get the chance and the time to invest in making my own music, Logic Pro is the, the app that I use for that. Now I do loads of writing for my business, and if you're not aware, I have a very active blog and a Medium account as well. I'll put links to both of those things in the video description, but you can see me ramble on talking about Apple products and tech in general. And to get my words down, I use Ulysses. And Ulysses is just a word processor, but it's a completely stripped back word processor. So it's not Word, that's the key thing. It's not Microsoft Word. It's a stripped back writing tool which just gives you pretty much a blank screen with a flashing cursor and for a writer that is really important because it removes all the distractions from, that you get from things like the ribbon bar in Microsoft Word and any other user interface elements that just get in the way. All that stuff is gone in Ulysses. They just focus on giving you a lovely clean slate to work from. The other really cool thing it does is it integrates with WordPress. So once I finish writing a blog for my website, I can upload directly from Ulysses into WordPress Massive time saver. Onto web browsers. Now I do use two. I use Safari and Google Chrome. I use Safari 98% of the time. I am a Safari user, hands up. I know we're fairly few and far between. I wrote about this recently. Again, I'll put a link to the blog in this video description. But I wrote recently, well, not that recently, a little while ago, about why I can't quite understand why people are so obsessed with Google Chrome. There's nothing wrong with it. It works very well, it's pretty quick. But if you use a MacBook, for example, it sucks the battery life like nothing else in, in the world. I don't know, I think if you're a Mac user, just use Safari, it's great. I've, I've had, never had any, any problems with Safari. It doesn't really crash, it's quick enough, it's compatible with all of the web apps that I use. But I do occasionally turn to Google Chrome and that's for two reasons. One of them is a contract that I have where I have to use a couple of pieces of software that only work in Google Chrome. And the other reason is for this channel. And uh, it's very simple, I use a tool called vidIQ, which is a plugin basically for Google Chrome. It doesn't work with Safari and it works for basically getting tags and things and a bit of SEO for, for the YouTube channel. So that's the only reason I use it really. For me, Safari 98% of the time. Now, while I'm on the subject of web browsing, just a very quick note about this video's sponsor, which is NordPass. And NordPass is this awesome tool. I use it all the time. It stores credit card details, login details, and it makes signing up to new services, new 
online shops and things super, super fast. You know what it's like when you try to remember passwords and set up new accounts for new websites and things. It's a real pain, whereas NordPass makes it super, super simple. Works on desktop, mobile, it's browser independent, it's absolutely brilliant. And for a limited time, you can grab a two year NordPass premium plan with 50% off if you visit nordpass.com forward slash Mark Ellis or use the code Mark Ellis at checkout. They'll also give you a month free, but this promotion ends on the 1st of August, so you haven't got long. I've put a link in the description, click on that link, go through, try out NordPass, it is brilliant. I don't use Apple Mail at all. I don't use it on my iPhone, I don't use it on my iPad, and I do not use it on my Mac. Instead, I use a tool called Spark Mail. Spark's brilliant, and there's a few reasons I like it. One of the main reasons is that it makes managing multiple email accounts really easy. And I have about three or four email accounts that I have to look after. The other reason I like it so much is that when I get a new Mac, setting up Spark email is really easy. You just log in and it carries across everything, all your settings, all your accounts. Whereas historically with Apple Mail, I'd have to set everything up manually and it's just a real faff. I just love Spark Mail. If you're fed up with Apple Mail or if you're just looking to try something different for email, I really recommend checking it out. There are hundreds of email clients out there. I recommend Having a look through, trying them out, there's things like Airmail, I've used Big Mail recently, that's definitely worth looking at. Go off and have a look, check them out. But for me, Spark Email, it just works, it's great. And on a similar subject, I don't use Apple's default calendar app. Again, nothing wrong with it, it works pretty well. But several years ago, I discovered Fantastical and it was just game changing. That's for a few reasons, but I suppose the main reason really is the ease with which you can add new calendar items to Fantastico. It's got this great drop down feature at the top of your, your menu bar in Mac OS. You can drop down and have a look at the calendar and do what they call a quick entry where you can basically type in a very conversational calendar entry, like you know meeting Dave at the pub tomorrow at 12 p.m. remind me, something like that. And it will automatically change that text string into the calendar item. It's just so, so, so convenient. Syncs across to your iPhone, to your iPad, as you would expect. It's not free does cost money, but it's really worth it. And I do love supporting independent developers like that, particularly when the apps are so, so good. Now I have an awful memory, which means I have to work from to-do lists every single day. And I don't use reminders on Mac OS or iPad OS or iOS. Instead, I use an app called Things. Very subjective thing, this kind of stuff, if you excuse the pun. Uh, but for me, Things, the design of it, it's very clean, very easy to use. I'm not into GTD, this get things done stuff. I, I just work from a to-do list. That's pretty much the way that I work each day. And I have to have that to-do list because like I say, I'll just I would forget to do anything if I didn't have it. And Things is just the best way I've found of getting through that to-do list. Loads of features, really good integration with Siri. It's got, got good integration with the Apple Watch actually as well. I do use that. It's got a little app where you can just obviously check your to-do list and check them off when you've done stuff. And again, it syncs flawlessly across every device. Toggle Track is an app that I use to track my time. Really simple, can't get too excited about it. I do that for two reasons. One of them is occasionally for client billing, although not that often. The main reason though is just to see how productive I'm being each day. So literally every task I undertake, including this filming now, I will start timing on Toggle Track. That sounds like a real pain in the you know what, but it's not. It's actually quite straightforward. Once you get in, into the habit of pressing play and starting your timer before each task. It just becomes second nature. I've been doing this for years. I've been using toggle track for years. What I love about it is that you can see, you kind of get a real time view of how busy you've been each day or how productive you've been. That's the way that I look at it. So if I reach lunchtime and toggle track tells me I've done four or five hours of work, I know it's been a pretty good morning. If I've done two hours of work, I've been messing about. Try it out, it's great. It's free as well. There's a free version, which is really good. Quick mention for Trello. Trello is a project management app that relies on this kind of Kanban style project management where you have columns that are completely customizable for things like, you know, projects to do, projects in progress, projects done, and they have cards that you move between those columns. It's really straightforward, really visual. It's a great way of kind of getting this kind of bird's eye view of how you're getting on on much bigger projects. Now I use Trello for a couple of contracts that I have and it's an awesome team tool actually because you can communicate with people across different cards, you can comment on things, you can mention people, you can assign people tasks. It's great. So again, I'd recommend having it, having a look at it. It's, it's free. There's a free version of Trello which is really, really good. They don't tend to pare it down very much. But if you're the sort of person who needs a visual view of how your projects are working out each day, try out Trello. Very quick mention for some Microsoft apps that I have to use. Uh, one of them is Teams. Again, that's for a current contract that I have where 
they use Teams, so I have to use it. It's not bad, actually. I don't mind Teams. I, I really like the way that Teams is integrated with Microsoft Outlook, which is a great email client, actually, for macOS. It also integrates nicely with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, which are the other three apps that I have from Microsoft installed on my Macs. They're there because I have to use them, basically. I, I use Word occasionally for certain document management and certain blogging that I do for people. I have to submit them as Word documents. Excel, I still personally think it's the best way to deal with spreadsheets. I don't do a lot of spreadsheets, but when I do, I use Excel rather than numbers. And PowerPoint, Keynote is better. You can make much better looking Keynote presentations. But PowerPoint, again, the people that I work with use PowerPoint, so I have to have it installed. You can never really get away from Microsoft Office. If you have, let me know how you did that. For music, I have Apple Music and Spotify. In fact, I also have Cubas or Cubos, Cubas. I never know how to pronounce that. That's, I'm using that one for high fidelity, hi-fi audio streaming stuff. Although you can get that now obviously on Apple Music. I did a video about that recently, which I'll link to above. They're the three apps that I use for streaming my music. I don't really have a preference. Apple Music's great, Spotify's great, Cubas, Cubos. I wish, how do I pronounce that? That's great as well. They all have pretty much the same library. So it comes down to A, the price, B, compatibility across your devices, and C, that's probably it actually. Uh, but yeah, those three work for me brilliantly. The only reason I use, I think, Spotify more than any other is because it has better playlists. I really like the curated playlists from users on Spotify, which you don't really get on Apple Music, but that's how I listen to my music on my Mac. Now for anything image related, I use two apps. First one is the one I use most often, which is Lightroom, and that sits at the moment on my M1 Mac Mini behind me. Very quick uh, explanation about how I use Lightroom. I take a photo, so if I'm doing, for example, a photo for a blog or a photo for a video like this, like a, a thumbnail, I'll take a photo normally of myself, which is weird. I'll then upload it onto the M1 Mac Mini into Lightroom. It's Lightroom, the, the kind of latest version, not Lightroom Classic. I made the switch a few months ago. It was worth it, trust me. But yeah, I upload the raw image onto the M1 Mac Mini into Lightroom. I then pick up my 12.9 inch iPad Pro, not the M1 version, and use the pencil and the version of Lightroom on here to edit that photo. So actually these days I use Lightroom fairly lightly on the Mac, but it's there. It, it forms a very, very, very important part of my workflow and I use it every single day. The other photo image editing tool that I use occasionally is Photoshop. Now I'm not a master on Photoshop by any stretch of the imagination, but if I need to do any form of image manipulation, if I need to perhaps tidy up a photo for some reason, perhaps get rid of certain things in the photo, or just do something with an image file, like change the file format the size, the crop, whatever, whatever it might be. I tend to use Photoshop for that. Quick mention of day one. This is a journaling app that I don't use consistently, but I love it. It's a really strange app for me. It's something that I want, I want to use desperately every day. And when I first started this channel, I did. I spent a good six months journaling every single day about the how I was getting on building the channel, using day one to make notes of things that I heard on podcasts about you know, YouTube tips and all that sort of stuff. And then as always is the case with me, and it's my my fault, not day one's fault, it just tailed off. I just didn't I didn't keep up the, the journaling basically. I kind of let it let it slip. Now I occasionally use it, I occasionally dip back into those records that I made last year of YouTube tips and stuff. It's just a it's a lovely app and I prefer it. I mean it's nice, don't get me wrong. It runs really well on, on iOS, it's a very nice looking app on that. But there's something about it being on the Mac that's quite satisfying. They give you a drop down on the menu bar that you can do a very quick entry into. It's definitely worth trying out if you want to give journaling a go. Now Discord, I have an awesome Discord server which I started at the start of this year and since then other people have made it what it is today which is just a really lovely little community some very helpful very funny people in there it's where i met rob who is the co-host of the 8 or 16 podcast again link in the description it's just this like i say wonderful community and discord is the platform that i use for that now you can access discord via a web browser but i've, I've always used the mac app which seems to work perfectly now if you do want to check out my discord server it's all part of my patreon membership so if you want to support this channel, you're doing that anyway by watching this video, by the way, particularly if you've got this far. But if you want to support it further and perhaps you know, buy me a coffee every month, you will get some additional content in return and access to that community. So check out the link in the description. Now, the last app to mention is Twitter. I use the official Twitter app 
on the Mac OS. I know there's lots of alternatives out there. I've tried many of them like TweetDeck and TweetBot and all that stuff, but I just quite like the simplicity of the official Twitter app. That's it really. I can't get too excited about the Twitter app. I just like the Mac OS version and it sits on every Mac that I, I use. And it's just a very quick way of bringing up Twitter, sharing my content, getting involved with people who speak to me on Twitter. So I hope you found one or two apps in that list that inspired you to give them a try. But if you want to learn how to get more from your Mac, keep watching for my top five time-saving tips video. Till next time, I'm so hot. I'm sorry if I'm sweating. It's just so hot in this room. I will see you on the next video.